I was hoping this would follow me. I'm glad I got it. And, and 
as a result of that, while I was a council member, I did everything I could to try to bring awareness and elevate these issues that I know you guys work with on a daily basis. And so I can't tell you how appreciative I am of the hard work because I know what it takes and what you do on a daily basis and what the difference it makes in people's lives. So I'm very thankful and I'm just honored to be here with you today. And I, I have an active coach with Special Olympics. I continue to do that. I do what I can as, as an advisory member with making headway. And um, at, when I was with the Department of Fish and Game, I, I served on their, I chaired their uh, Disability Awareness Committee. So, I, you know, see it from a state agency perspective, all the issues that they're supposed to be doing and should be doing to not only increase the workforce, but also make accommodations um, with the workplace and for the public because our fishing has a lot of trails and facilities and active programs for hunters and fishermen people. So, so that's just quick sprinkling by way of background. Um, so like I said, I'm trying to work into the world of retirement right now and uh, I, I just I was thinking about that the other day. I, I remember taking my, my daughter uh, to visit my father in Florida and we were in this assisted living facility and we were you know, doing the tour and walking through there and it was, uh, you know, we got to walk by and see the room that was the, you know, the chapel slash the library slash movie theater slash, you know, but of course they had free popcorn going there so from, from an eight-year-old's perspective that was like really awesome. And we walked by the coffee uh, bar and it was like, oh, they had an ice cream machine there. And so by the time we got to the elevator, and my eight-year-old looks up at me and says, I can't wait to retire. <laughs> so so, so I'm, that's me now. So I'm, I'm trying to make that adjustment myself. So, so anyways, it, it brought a smile to my dad and that's all that matters. So, so with that, I, I'd like to uh, introduce some folks here. Um, First of all, I would like to thank some very important people, and that's the people that sponsored this. So HCAR, and if you're here um, representing one of those groups, could you maybe stand up so we can recognize that? So HCAR, thank you. Council on Developmental Disabilities. Uh, Sun Valley Group. I'm sure that's those lovely flowers on the table. Um, Mercer Frazier. Good for Mercer Frazier. And of course, Mr. Brett Schuler back there in the kitchen. Uh, Also, uh, Tri County Independent Living. Woo! And Coast Central Credit Union. There's Brad. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> and last but not least, Pro Pacific. So, as you can tell. Oh, um, excuse me, one more. Coast Central. Oh, Coast Central. Did I know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coast Central Credit Union. <laughs> First order of business here is, a, and a, this was pointed out to me, and uh, I pointed it out to staff numerous times. Um, but um, this is not an ADA accessible stage. So the first order of business is I'm going to bring the microphone down, and I'm going to turn it over to Paige and Becky, who are going to talk about what's going on with Humboldt County. Hi everyone, uh, let me know if you can't hear me, I'm a little soft-spoken. Uh, my name is Paige Smuts, I'm with uh, County of Humboldt Human Resources. Good afternoon, I'm Becky Carey and I'm with Humboldt County Human Resources as well. So we wanted to take um, a moment to give you a brief update on the County of Humboldt. Um, we recently revamped our recruitment and selection process about a year ago. Um, we're trying to make it a little more user-friendly. Um, we've introduced online applications in recent years. 
Um, and we are also incorporating um, online testing as well for candidates so that they can do testing from home rather than have to come into a center and test. Um, this has been really great. A couple examples. Um, now instead of doing post-testing for our emergency dispatchers, they can do it from home through critical. Um, and there's actually no wait period with critical, which we're excited about. Um, another example is for bilingual um, proficiency. We're offering that online um, rather than having them come in and test. So um, that's been a great highlight. Um, our provider, Alta, they do 89 languages. Um, most common are Spanish and Hmong. Um, but that's been a great way to get our county employees who are bilingual um, some additional pay as well. Uh, let's see. Um, we also have started uh, sending all of our HR teams going into the uh, Shaw HR Disability Interactive Process Training to provide a more comprehensive uh, compliance under APA and Google, uh, which has been really great. And I'm very excited when they come back from that training event as well. Um, so current and new employees will be going and attending that. Um, we are piloting an online onboarding for new hires, which allows them to complete the required uh, forms off from home and before they become uh, on, before they get onboarded or before they become employees online. Pardon me, before they actually start. So that's been big, and then it moves into our learn program, uh, which is on the uh, as well. So we can do online training for the required trainings that we have to be online. So we did our all hands training on Monday. So that's also um, in person and online. So depending on how you wanted to do those, you can take that either way. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Shaw HR training, I just came back about a month ago. Really excited. Um, it really allows us to find more ways to allow uh, either future employees or current employees to perform um, the full essential functions of their job um, fully and safely and so um, we're really excited I think it's going to increase our compliance and really just kind of give more more of a comprehensive um, look at the disability interactive process and then kind of picking back off of that we're also trying to reduce um, workplace injuries by offering ergonomic evaluations and assessments for current employees to make sure that they have all the equipment that they need to do their job um, such as like a sit-stand workstation or ergonomic keyboard or chair. Um, so we're excited about just continuing all of those purposes too. Um, so we, um, in closing, we brought with us um, some samples of our current job openings that we have going on. Um, we encourage everybody to apply either um, online um, for any positions that we can apply for. Thank you, and I'm going to turn this back over to How about this uh, fabulous NCEPD luncheon? It's very amazing to see so many people here. Um, let's see, where to start? So I joined the, the NCEPD in roughly 1992. So I don't know if anyone here today was involved back then. But we had a great group. and. Um, and many of the, the agencies that are here today are, you know, were, were a part of those, you know, days back then. Um, and um, yeah. it's always been a really important part of my life to participate in, you know, the employment component of persons with disabilities um, as a 
person with a disability myself, and so if anybody else out there is blind or sight impaired, just so you know, I am sight impaired. And sometimes that stuff doesn't get translated when somebody's talking, as you would necessarily know. Anyway, so yeah, I've been in, in Humboldt County for a long time. Um, I went to HSU. Um, I um, have uh, I had a small business here from 1998 to 2008 called Eureka Assistive Technologies, where I did a lot of technology evaluations and taught Braille and did a lot of things like that kind of thing for the Department of Rehabilitation. In, to, in um, 2008, I moved to Seattle, and I learned quite a lot there. And I worked as a manager in, uh, at a nonprofit organization, and then I started um, my my current business. My current business is is called Creative Inclusion, and Creative Inclusion is basically an accessibility and ADA consultancy, and I um, serve. Basically, my clients are, are usually businesses or, you know, civic entities. Um, and the kinds of things that I'm doing now that really seems to, you know, it seems to be what people, what people want, and it seems to fill a real sort of niche, if you will, is I'm teaching people how to do accessible meetings, how to conduct, how to, well, how to, how to, how to basically vet a location, for and then conduct accessible meetings. So that's um, been something that folks seem to really enjoy and benefit from. Um, I also do um, accessible customer service. So how do you, you know, meet and greet your customers? How do you interact with people in a relaxed and reasonable way and so that everybody benefits? Um, Another thing I'm doing now is accessible wayfinding. So that means, um, you know, accessible signage, um, accessible pathways that include um, barrier. I'm sorry, uh, borders and edges and basically tactile treatments that alert someone using a cane that there is something to either discover or, yeah, basically it's, it, it alerts somebody that there's something to discover, whether that be a sign or another, um, could be an obstacle, but anyway. So creative inclusion is very busy and active, and, and if I can help your company or your agency in any way, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, and I guess I just want to say that I'm so incredibly thrilled to be back in Arcata, back in Humboldt County, and um, I appreciate um, the NCEPD uh, leadership um, giving me an opportunity to oops, uh, to describe my business and to sort of reintroduce myself. So I actually don't have any cards with me now. Um, I'm getting them updated. But if you're at all interested in reaching me, my email address is peggy at creativeinclusion.us. And I'd be happy to talk with you about any way that I can be of help to you. So, uh, I'll give this back to Mark and thank you very much. Thanks very much. out of order here. So uh, we're going to jump down to the end of the agenda because uh, uh, Linda Parker is here. There she is. So Linda, would you like to come forward? Observance of National Disability Employment Awareness Month, the Northwest Committee for the Employment of People with Disabilities would like to recognize Linda Parker for her dedication to the Northwest Committee for Employment of People with Disabilities, Workforce Diversity, and in recognizing the important contributions that individuals with disabilities bring to the workplace in October 2019. Congratulations.
sneaky people out there. You kept this very quiet, all the, the board members. It, this is so much appreciative of all of you. Over the years, I think I've been with HSU for 19, and I've been with NCEPD since 2004. And each and every board member has been very special throughout the years. But particularly the board members this year, I'm honored to have worked with all of you. And I know this is out of context, but they seldom get to introduce themselves and where they work, so I would really, really welcome if I could just go around and say thank you wow. and introduce Ooh. yourself, your name, and where you're from. Uh, my name is Trey Garza. I work for the Employment Development Department, Disabled Veteran Outreach Program. I'm Shannon Lockwood. I work for the Department of Rehabilitation. <laughs> I'm Marcia Hines, and I work for Humboldt Community Access and Resource Center. Light, President. Mr. Charles Beans and there you go. he has been so instrumental in oh, you helping us better as an organization and to bring people together, particularly so that NCPD can be out there and heard and that you all know that we work with individuals to connect them with employers. So that's what it's all about. Charlie? Thank you, Linda. And also, I didn't, I actually tried to surprise him. We even put it in the newspaper, so she doesn't read the newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's neat. It, and I think NCUPD is a, a strong organization that needs to be a little stronger and get more members and everything else. We have a lot to do. Um, meeting the, uh, employers and work with people who do employ people has always been neat because we get different views and we try to provide the best for other people. And thank you. I also want to recognize that Deborah Knightley is here and she was a past president of NCEPD as well. Anybody else here? Uh, let's go over here because I see another past board member. In a little while, but actually I'm coming back. Uh, I'm Jeff Spooler. I'm with Making Headway Center for Brain Injury Recovery. All right, please let me know. Am I missing anybody? I know that Steve. <laughs> I'm Steve Bell I'm with H. Car. Marche is actually taking over that position for me. So that's but why I passed right the right mic to her. The table with us. We are. We've been here for uh, quite a few years. So. All right, anyone else? Thank you all. I feel very honored for this. It's very much appreciated. Thank you, Linda. Um, and I definitely want to echo what Linda said and recognize. I, at, as a council member, I, I served on the board of directors for the League of California City, so that's representatives for all those sort of 16 regions of California. So I, I covered Humboldt, Del Norte Lake, and, uh, and Mendocino counties. So there's 16 cities in there. So we're sitting there at the, ta at the table with the folks from LA and San Diego and San Jose. And my job was to brag about what we did back here in Humboldt County and in Arcata, but I'm aware of all the all the little things that you all do every day and the little projects and the difference you make in people's lives. 
you know, those, those translate into powerful stories when you're talking to people throughout the state and trying to raise both awareness and recognition and how, you know, our needs are different from their needs and we need that kind of support that state level that, you know, when all the cities are kind of speaking with one, one voice can bring to, to the agencies around this table. So, collectively, big table here. So, I really appreciate it. Um, I think to, now is, is the time to really kind of raise your voices and, and really showcase some of the things that are going on because it's when times are good, relatively good economically, um, I think this is a time to, to push forward on some things that um, you know we need here in our area. Uh, I had a conversation with Charlie about um, you know working with OES and you know. I, I served on the Seismic Safety Commission, so, you know, how do people with disabilities in, in natural nat disasters, how emergency situations, how do you respond? What kinds of provisions, what kinds of programs, what kinds of assistance are available? And I can just tell you, I, I, I coached the Special Olympics. We, we were on our way to Santa Rosa for a soccer tournament uh, last week, and you know, we were, it was touch and go as to whether just because of the power outage. And that was like a earth, hurricane drill. You know, we had a couple days notice on that. So we all know we live in earthquake country. When it hits, it hits and it can hit hard. And so, um, you know, I shared stories with my athletes as to, you know, just that kind of one day indoor camping experience and, um, you know, what they did and what they need and how hard that was. And so, anyways. I really appreciate the things that you all are doing out there, and there are people whose lives should make a difference. So, um, with that, um, I'd like to invite Kevin O'Brien up. We have a presentation for Ms. Mark. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Kevin O'Brien. I'm the president, current president of the board of uh, Tri County Independent Living. Um, also, um, recently retired from Hubble State's Student Disability Resource Center. Uh, I want to speak a little bit about Mari, who we're recognizing today, because uh, she has a quite a varied background. So uh, prior to Mari's uh, arrival at Tri-County Independent Living in 2002, uh, Mari began her career as a co-worker, administrator, and Spanish instructor at the Wonawak Institute in Morales, Mexico. Um, she was also selected out of 14 instructors from the Institute to teach Spanish at the Johnson College, uh, part of the University of Redlands, California. After relocating to San Francisco in the early 80s, Mari continued her work with the Salvation Army as a uh, facilitator where she counseled HIV positive folks, other clients, and conducted a variety, a whole host of educational recovery programs. Um, her work with the Salvation Army continued through the 90s and early 2000s, administering the uh, Gateway Transitional Housing Program, the REACH Program, Homeless Meal Programs, and Kids Club After School Programs in South San Francisco neighborhoods. Additionally, she worked with the Salvation Army uh, San Francisco Harbor Light Center, where she was the primary program intake coordinator and disability specialist. Since Working with Tri-County Independent Living, Mari has become our Independent Living Specialist Program Coordinator and our resident social security expert. Uh, Mari helps our clients navigate the, at times, difficult gauntlet of the social security system and assist them in developing individual living plans. Finally, Mari, uh, Mari is especially interested in working with pre-18 high school students um, living with a disability and assisting them in getting ready for their post-18 independent living. If anyone knows this situation, a lot of services uh, are rented through schools, uh, through the special education field, and once they graduate, turn 18, that all drops. So it's a it's quite a transition, and really pleased that Mari helps uh, support those. Needless to say, Mari uh, represents the best in human service dedication and is an inspiration to all of us at Tri-County. I'm very honored to know and work with Mari and to introduce her today. Mari.
Thank you so much. Give me a second, please. My extra legs. Well, um, I think this has been a journey. Once again, my name is Mari, and um, I am very honored and happy to be here with all of you. And uh, yes, I have been working with a uh, independent living um, for all these years. Um, I have been here in uh, uh, Hobo County, living in Eureka since 2003. And um, I came to know Tri County independent living just quote out of the blue. I was um, establishing residency here in Eureka and I went to my primary care doctor and I was asking um, about an agency who will have information about um, uh, extension for my car and they told me, go to Tri County. Actually, you need to call, and um, it's by appointment. And I called, and somehow that connection that was lost, and I went there, and um, I left with an application on hand because Tri County was hiring. Um, then. My background was working um, in the social work field, but also uh, in the substance abuse field. Uh, then I applied and I was hired within a month of my arrival here. As a person with a disability, um, I had big turning points in my life. Um, I have polio, and uh, the doctors wanted to take me to the hospital and live there. And my parents, they said no. Mari will stay with us. Then I was raised, um, uh, my parents as they go to school, achieve things in life. And it was very difficult because I was uh, achieving things in life. I graduated, um, and, but always I had, I had awareness of by way of working and um, and I wasn't able to accept my own disability. And for years and years I had a struggle. I was successful in life. I am the first person in my family who graduated from UC Berkeley. I start drinking. I start drinking in order to uh, cover up feelings, to say I'm fine, I have no problems, I don't care. And it took me to a very dark place in my life. I was married, I, we had a wonderful daughter, Tamara Diana. She lives in the Bay Area. In November, Six, 1986, I went to Harbor Light to address my drinking problem. And then I was able, I was there for six months and Harbor Light helped me to accept myself as a person with a disability. And today I feel very good. I'm, I'm, 
I, after that, I start working uh, with a task force um, advocating uh, for all of us to have accessible um, accessibility, period. Then, um, now I'm here today and I am happy uh, we continue with our mission at Tri-County Independent Living throughout all these years. Uh, our mission is independence. All of us, we can make decisions in our own choices and um, Tri-County has been going through a lot of uh, 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 chapters throughout all these years and today we have more services um, uh, or department with Lisa, transition department uh, with Anissa, but a youth coordinator advocacy, caring independent living specialist Juliana and Elizabeth are part of the Assistive Technology Department, Lending Library, Red Program, um, Charlie, Cindy, um, Systems Change, Advocacy, um, our wonderful director and board members who continue carrying on the mission of independent living and um, our front desk administrative assistance as well. Then along the way, we have wonderful clients. And always my way of thinking is when a client comes to our center, they come with a lot of experience facing difficulties and trials. And always my hope has been that when the client leaves our center, in a way, they may feel much better. And they will be able to make changes in their lives because they deserve the best. Then saying that, I would like to once again, say thank you, and I'll continue working um, with the disability community and all of us. Thank you. Right. And in observance of National Disability Employment Awareness Month, the Northwest Committee for the Employment of People with Disabilities would like to recognize Mari Dordenstein for her contributions towards workforce diversity and in recognizing the important contributions that individuals with disabilities bring to the workplace. It's oh. underneath, so it's you have to put your chair. hand underneath. Um, left or right, I'm not sure. It's under there, though.
information about the Department of Rehabilitation and anyone you speak with, because you never know what we can do for people and what kind of funding or services that we can provide to get them back to work. Thank you very much.
time, they bring joy to our life, being at McDonald's on a daily basis. Not only our employees, our customers, we have a lot of diverse customers come to our McDonald's on a daily basis. So we work very closely with them and we want to be able to continue to do that. So I appreciate this opportunity again.